How do you make a food tier list? There's only six possible healing values of food items, and mixed drinks are clearly the best options, right? It should be the mixed drinks, then orange juice, then everything else. What's the point? These are the questions I asked myself before even getting the request to do this topic. But after getting this request, I revisited the idea and gave it some more thought, and was able to set some criteria. First, mixed drinks will not appear on the list. I plan to make a tier list for the mixed drinks across all the games in the Dead Rising series, but they did still factor into this list. More on that in a minute. Secondly, spoiled and cooked versions of food items will be lumped in with their raw versions, so raw beef, spoiled meat, and a well-done steak are treated as the same item. Now in terms of the actual criteria, the obvious thing is how much does it heal, that's the first factor, but it's not strictly the most important. It also matters how easy the food item is to get a hold of in the first place. A well-done steak heals as much as six bag of chips, but you're far more likely to find six bag of chips at any part of the mall than you are to find raw meat and then an oven to cook it. But I'm not just looking at the natural respawn locations, but the random possible spawns through the cardboard boxes. Yeah, if you didn't know, every cardboard box in the mall has its own possible inventory, sometimes varying not just from location to location, but the specific stores in each section as well. I also looked at where the food items spawn in the infinity mode, and what survivor scoops cause what food items to spawn, just to be thorough, though these two bits are not nearly as important to their ranking. The final of these three major factors are the aforementioned mixed drinks, or more accurately, their recipes. If a food item can be combined with something that is normally around one of the game's many blenders, especially in Paradise Plaza, to make Nectar, Spitfire, Quickstep, Untouchable, or Energizer, that makes the food item way more useful than it would otherwise be. There are some special cases with individual items that help them climb the ranks, but these are the three core factors, healing potency, the spawn rate, and the recipe potential. Now that I've given what is easily the stupidest tier list I've done yet the most concrete set of rules I've ever had, I have one question. Who's hungry? <coughs> This is one of the few food items that will strictly spawn in the supermarket, aside from a few loot drops in the infinity mode. It only heals for one block, and you have literally everything else in the game besides pie to heal with in there. This is a food item you will only ever eat for the gourmet achievement. Also, why did they add red cabbage but not green apples? Am I the only one bothered by that? Number 15. Burger King Foot Lettuce Lettuce apparently can spawn in cardboard boxes somewhere in the mall, as both of the Dead Rising wikis claim this, but I can't recall a single time it actually happened. It also has a unique model compared to the red cabbage, which is just a purple version of the cabbage. But it also has what is easily the worst model of any food item in the game. Honestly, given how worthless lettuce actually is nutritionally as a vegetable, or in terms of its calories, I'm surprised this heals anything at all. Would you rather have a radish than sex? Honestly, these bottom three are interchangeable because they only appear in the supermarket, but I have to give the Radish credit. This is the only action game I can think of where a Diacon Radish is a healing item. Or indeed is acknowledged. But these bottom three items really just exist to add some flavor to the world and make the supermarket a little more believable. The Infinity Mode does give the Radish a little bit of an edge and that it appears in a few inventory loot drops and it spawns in the home saloon, so it's not the worst of these. JUST EAT THE DAMN ORANGES! The Hall family dropping three of these in the Infinity Mode is what saves it from being E tier. Given that you'll probably always have three health books in that mode, that's a total of 18 blocks of health right away at the beginning of the mode. That being said, you're only going to find them in the supermarket in 72 hour mode. I swear I remember that the cardboard boxes in the home saloon could drop these, but I wasn't able to recreate it for this video, so I'm not counting that. From the earth I rise, and to the earth I one day will return. With corn being found in the food court, you'd think it would be higher than the last four by the virtue of the mixed drinks alone. But unfortunately, that's what lowers it. Most of its possible creations are going to be zombie, a mixed drink you typically don't want to drink. It's also a one-block healing item, which is normally good for saving your better healing items for later, but you're in the food court, and in 72-hour mode, that hardly matters. There's no less than seven wines in multiple blenders. If you ran out of wine, what were you doing? I claim this point for France! Okay, on the food that actually has something to chew on. Baguettes spawn in Jill sandwiches and can appear in cardboard boxes under the back stairs in Paradise Plaza. And a lone one will always be found in the North Plaza and in the movie theater. Unfortunately, the boxes have low spawn rates for them in Paradise Plaza, 
And once Ronald shows up, Jill sandwiches will no longer spawn any food. This reduces the Surrender Bread to a rare and not very effective healing item. Its best use in those two places is healing so you can save the bigger and more effective healing items for mixed drinks. So, eh. That's it, cheese. Out of all the food exclusive to the supermarket, the cheese makes the least amount of sense. Between the burger shops, the sandwich delis, and the taco stand, cheese should really be more common in the mall. What puts this above the rest is the gun shop trio. Part of their food supply that spawns for their mission is, get this, cheese. And given that there's a real chance you'll get hurt between their gunfire and just the fact you're going to the gun store in North Plaza, having the ability to heal yourself and then save the wine for later is actually kind of useful. Especially since this is a side quest players will not want to restart for if they can avoid it. Come on out, everyone! Come on! Get your ice cream! The best thing I can say about the ice pops is that you can heal off them and then use the milk and yogurt for quick step in the blender. They melt too quickly to be a long-term healing item, and the two blocks they give you are not worth saving. But getting two of them every time you enter the food court makes it pretty easy to get your health back up. And given the very real chance the convicts are outside waiting for you, being at full health and having a lot of quick step in your inventory is actually kinda useful. Grapefruits will appear in two early missions and have a high chance to spawn when you're saving Bill. And given that's when your inventory space is still at a premium, it's everything I said about the ice pops applying here. Is now a good time to mention that I prioritize the ability to heal and top off when you normally wouldn't, over the ability to save food items for later. Cause that's why the grapefruit is above the ice pops, even if they still share a tier. Also, it's cute how a few of these spawn on top of the palm trees in the entrance plaza. We also need zucchini. I love zucchini. The zucchini is the first food item to earn what I would call a good tier. And it's not for its healing value of one block, but combining two zucchinis together, or a zucchini with corn or the various canned goods in the food court, will make Spitfire, something you otherwise cannot make in the food court thanks to the lack of chips. But beyond that, it's just another vegetable. Yogurt! Yogurt is useful for making quick step, but that's about all it's good for, if I'm honest. It also spawns with the lovers when they appear, so it's good for healing when you get to them. Beyond that, you're only ever finding it in the supermarket, so don't expect to use it that often. You monster, let me see those melons. A melon or two will appear with the occasional side quests, most notably the gun shop trio, but it doesn't naturally spawn outside of the supermarket. It does, however, regularly appear with the cardboard boxes in all of North Plaza, where you spend basically the entire last third of the game. And since the survival book turns this two block healing item into a four block healing item, that means that you'll actually find yourself recovering quite a bit of health with this thing. I don't think you'll ever hold one of these in your inventory, because it's not really good for anything, but if you need a quick heal and you're in North Plaza, which is very likely late game, you'll probably find yourself eating a few of these. <coughs> the squash is the opposite end of the spectrum. The squash is just another one-block healing vegetable, but it can be found in the cardboard boxes in the warehouse and the rooftop. This means that whenever you're going to or from the safe house, you can just open these up and have a chance to get something. Now sure, there's four healing items you can get, and the squash is easily the least useful of them, but it has a pretty high spawn rate, and it does mean that the better items you can get from it, you can save for mixed drinks. So in a roundabout way, it being worse makes it useful, even if you're never going to actively fish for one of these. Pizza time. Our first cookable item, the pizza. It heals for two blocks, it can rot to a worthless one item that makes you sick, and it can be cooked to a four block heal. By itself, it's not terribly useful. The food court, which has most of the ovens, has no shortage of proper four block and even five block healing items that you don't need to cook and they won't spoil on you. What makes the pizza unique is that it can actually earn you PP. Uh, sure, the raw meat can as well, but since the food court has six of the nine ovens in the mall, and the pizza shop has four cardboard boxes that will always drop a frozen pizza, well, that means when you fight Carlito for the first time, you can cook those four pizzas, then defeat him, then get four new pizzas from the respawn cardboard boxes, cook two of those in the ovens, take the other two with you to Alfresca Plaza, and on the way back, grab another one and take it to Paradise. That's all nine ovens used, which means you get a 10,000 prestige point bonus on top of the 2,000 each oven gives you. 28,000 prestige points before you've been introduced to the queens is nothing to sneeze at, and there's no denying that pizzas are the best way to do that. Then there's how the Hall family in the Infinity Mode each drop a golden brown pizza. 
and how using all three health books will turn them into full heals, which is just more viable in the Infinity Mode than it is on a new run in 72 hour mode. Overall, pizzas are an easy go-to item for the early game. Rare. Medium rare. Medium. Medium well. Well done. So this is gonna sound weird, but despite well done steaks being the best healing items without the aid of a blender, they're not the best item early game. Raw beef is much harder to find than a pizza, and it spoils noticeably faster. The only way you can reliably get these is to go into the underground maintenance tunnels and open cardboard boxes, or journey over to the supermarket, which is filled with zombies outside of the one story mission. And given that no survivor has more than five blocks worth of health, it's really no better than the much easier to get wine at healing survivors. It's with overtime mode in the infinity mode where the stake shines. With the special forces all over the mall, and the route to get the items Isabella needs not being nearly as strict as the survivor scoops, going to the market for some raw meat and then cooking them when it's convenient might actually be preferable to mixed drink spam, if for no other reason than people don't like wasting their mixed drink effects. It's also the most common food drop of psychopaths in the infinity mode, and since you only need the survival book to turn it into a full 12 block heal, it's easy for stakes to become the go-to healing item in the late game. Mama, may I have cookie? Yeah, the cookies outrank the steak, I wouldn't have guessed it either. Cookies spawn in the park in an alfresca plaza, both naturally and through any cardboard boxes there. Not that you're gonna be finding any cardboard boxes in the park. But given that the park has the convicts and alfresca plaza has the population density of China, having some easy one-block healing items in both of these locations will be appreciated. They're also pretty common in the infinity mode, from the Hall family to survivors to them having some extra spawn locations. There's nothing special about cookies, but they're easily some of the more reliable healing items in two of the more dangerous areas of the mall. I am the milkman. My milk is delicious. Much like with the baguette, a single gallon of milk will always spawn in North Plaza and in one of the movie theaters. It's also capable of making quick step, as is yogurt and wine, but it's the infinity mode that pushes milk this high. It spawns in the underground maintenance tunnels by the various trucks, as I show in the video I did, and in the meat processing area, making for some good healing in this particularly hellish section. It also gets extra spawn- spawn- bleh. A few of the mini-bosses like Rich and Janet in the infinity mode will drop milk as well. It's a good mixed drink fodder in the main game, but it's a literal lifesaver in the infinity mode. But hey, look at all the pie! Pie is a unique case for a food item. It's a one block healer, so it's never worth carrying. But it's very useful in its two spawn locations. A pie and an orange juice will make Untouchable, which might be the best mixed drink in the game, and both spawn endlessly in Paradise Plaza. Two orange juices also spawn in Alfresca Plaza with an infinite pie stand near the blender. You can, in Alfresca Plaza, heal off the pies indefinitely, and use the milk and OJ for some quick step or nectar, whichever you would prefer. And, naturally, being able to make infinite untouchables in Paradise Plaza is really busted. It may be weak as a healing item, but it is the single most powerful blender item in the whole game. See? Oh. <laughs> it's a cabbage! Cabbage can appear in cardboard boxes in the warehouse. So, everything about how useful the squash is at healing applies here. But cabbage, mixed with OJ, will create Energizer, one of the most powerful mixed drinks for dealing with psychopaths. And that's all there is to it. It's squash, but with a mixed drink purpose. Number 20. Frog in a frozen vegetable bag. Okay, so imagine if the cabbage healed for two blocks of health without the aid of survival, spawned more frequently from the cardboard boxes than the cabbage or the squash does, and if it made quick step. That's the frozen vegetables. While the pies are the single most powerful blending item, the vegetables have better last minute healing, especially with the books, and they make an almost equally good mixed drink in the form of quick step. It's a versatile and often readily available healing item. I hate to be the one to say it, but I, I think we need some more orange juice to top this off. This is both expected and a minor upset. Orange juice makes it to the top five, but falls just short of S tier. With it healing four blocks of health and spawning indefinitely at the coffee shop in Paradise Plaza, it's both great for topping off your health before you head out into the mall, especially if the cardboard boxes were not nice to you, and it serves as a great baseline for basically every good mixed drink in the game. And if you don't want to use mixed drinks, or if you're still learning how to make them, you can just fill your inventory with them before you head out. Many would say this alone should put it to S tier. However, outside of that one location, 
only some of the cardboard boxes in Paradise Plaza and Wonderland Plaza have a chance of dropping it, and it's a noticeably smaller chance than the apples or the weapons have. So it's mostly just that one location you're going to be getting OJ. It heals a lot, it's next to the game's most convenient blender, and it's the base combination for the five good mixed drinks. But if you're in need of actual health in the mall, the only OJ you'll be using to heal is whatever you brought with you. Hello! When you think of one-block healing items, you think of these bag of chips, and for good reason. They have a 1 in 4 chance of appearing out of any given trash can, making them the most reliable improvised healing item. They're actually the main reason to use all three health books in 72 hour mode, in that you can use any of the chips from trash cans as well as the countless that are always going to spawn, especially in the entrance plaza with its various stores, to instantly recover three blocks of health just about anywhere. This means that you only need to stock up on health when you know you're going up against a boss fight. You can otherwise just heal off of all the chips you keep scavenging. Two bags of chips and a blender will also make Spitfire, which is basically an improvised weapon that heals you. One babble a day keeps the doctor away. You know what I haven't brought up yet? Healing survivors. Uh, something about survivor health. All of the male survivors, and Isabella when you have to escort her, have five blocks of health, while the female survivors have three and a half. And since when you heal a survivor, they drop their weapon, one block healing items are not ideal as it will only take a few zombies sneaking up on them to combo them, and when they're getting hit, you cannot heal them or give them a weapon until the animation's done. And those food books do not apply to the health survivors get from food items. This gives the apple a bit of a unique niche to fall into, on top of the obvious benefits of it being a two-block healing item that you can reliably get from cardboard boxes. On that note, it is the most common food item in Wonderland Plaza, as two will always spawn, and the cardboard boxes have a really high drop rate for them. Wonderland Plaza also has the most scoops and survivors in it. From Adam the Clown, Joe Slade, and Paul, along with their associated hostages, there's the Hanging Duo, the Lovers, the Taurus, who spawn a bunch of apples themselves, Susan, and Leroy. And most players will end up dragging Bailey, Gil, and the Gunshop Trio through this place as well. That adds up to 18 of the 48 savable survivors going through Wonderland Plaza. So if you or your survivors during any of these missions need healing, Apples are probably going to be what you do it with. We're up on a secret mission. We've got us a secret plan. The wine has a chance to spawn in the cardboard boxes of North Plaza, giving you a free five blocks of health right then and there. That goes up to ten with the survival book. And when you consider that ten wines spawn in the food court, and the five blocks they give means that it's a full heal to any survivor who will accept food items. And during a fresh playthrough, you'll spend most of the early game having six blocks of health, so the wine is basically a full heal by itself. Add the survival book onto that, and it's all but a full heal regardless of Frank's health value. Honestly, from day two onward, wine is the only reason to go back to the food court. Oh yeah, it also makes quick step. Can I have some chocolate milk? Coffee Creamer is a four-block healing item that spawns in the security room for the entirety of day one, and it has a high spawn rate in the cardboard boxes in North Plaza, aka the entirety of Act 3. It can be combined with orange juice or milk to make Quick Step, which are available at most of the blenders. And... it's really as simple as that, actually. The Coffee Creamer, which is actually chocolate milk if you read the label, it may not be as ubiquitous as apples or the snacks, nor is it as powerful of a healing item as wine, but it's just pretty good at everything. It heals a lot, it's not hard to find, and it makes one of the more useful mixed drinks. It's not the best in any one category, but it's the only food item that's really good at all of them. There we have it. I actually ranked the 25 base healing items of the Willamette Park View Mall, and without going by healing value alone. Uh, honestly, this was a more casual tier list, don't take it too seriously. But as for the actual healing as a mechanic, it's busted. More so than in 2 and 3, honestly. It's mostly because the cardboard boxes will frequently drop those 4-block healing items in North Plaza, which you spend a lot of time in. And while the orange juice doesn't have a high spawn rate, it does still come out of them. And that's on top of the fact that the game puts a lot of 4-block healing items within walking distance of the main route of the story and survivor missions. Replacing the gallons of coffee creamer and OJ and the bottles of wine in the cardboard boxes with the other fruits and vegetables that are otherwise only in the supermarket would solve this problem for the most part. It would also make using the three books more viable outside of just the potato chips if you could more reliably get those smaller healing items. The big thing I learned when looking at this is that 
The food is largely meant to add some flavor <laughs> to the world at large. They place the food items based on what would logically make sense for that part of the mall, and the healing values are based on the food item itself. How the health value relates to its location is irrelevant. It wasn't in the name of balance that made the food court have 10 5-block healing items, it's because the high-end dining of Chris's fine foods and the wine caskets make it logical to put wine there. The pizzas and the raw meat need to be cooked before they spoil, not because the food items themselves are absurdly powerful, it's because it just adds a nice attention to detail. The same goes for the frozen vegetables and the ice pops, defrosting and melting. They're certainly not good healing items, but it's a nice attention to detail. And it's not certainly in the name of balance that you need to knock the apples out of the trees in Leisure Park to use them. And while I appreciate these details, I can't blame Capcom Vancouver for downplaying and outright dropping them. Gives the first Dead Rising a bit more texture to appreciate, though. 